as you can see from the introductory slide, uh, the initial work on this subject, uh, be it, although I was, the, as it were, the project leader, uh, I had an important collaborator in Mike Ware, who is probably the best known British expert on alternative and Victorian processes. And even more importantly, perhaps, I had a Japanese collaborator, Sam Mabuchi, uh, who had worked many years in Britain in the banking industry and uh, is now back in Japan. So he was able to interview Japanese people for us, translate Japanese materials and so on. So that was, that was all really important. And since the 90, since the PW122 uh, paper that we wrote, which was what, 2007, uh, there's been another paper in PW uh, a couple of years ago, December 2017 actually, by Celio Barreto. And Celio is, well, was then a researcher in the Royal Ontario Museum. He's now moved on to a different phase of his academic career. Uh, but is still working on this sort of material. So um, I suppose we should start with a little bit of Japanese history. Uh, in January 1868, the Tokugawa shogunate was replaced in a coup by the young teenage, in fact, uh, Emperor Meiji, uh, Meiji wasn't his actual name, rather as in this country they take on a regnal name uh, and in, in his case it means enlightened rule. And so he was the young head of state. Uh, here he is uh, in a photograph by a Japanese photographer. And what we're going to come across quite a bit in the early part of this is the fact that photography was obviously introduced to Japan from uh, the West uh, but rapidly got taken up by Japanese practitioners. So the capital was relocated to what was then called Edo which was quickly renamed Tokyo as it still is. Uh, the samurai were disarmed, this coup didn't go entirely straightforwardly and so there was about a decade of, of, of uh, mopping up and armed rebellion going on in the background but by 1877 it was all tidied up uh, and the new Japanese government was working hard to to modernize in effect to bring in the industrial revolution into Japan uh, importing a great deal of the start that had been taken by Western countries including Britain of course um, and also opened up the ports and, and in effect a tourism industry. Western, Western visitors, Western tourists could come to Japan. But while, the, while the, the Japanese government was trying to convert Japan into something more like the West, the Western tourists came really to see the medieval feudal-like Japan that had existed until shortly before they arrived. Uh, so the, anti the antique, picturesque, orientalist history of Japan was what was really pulling people in. The first photographer in Japan that, of which there is any knowledge or record mm -hmm. was the charmingly named Eliphalet Brown, who was part of Commander Perry's 1853 expedition which started the process by force of opening up Japan. Um, this is one of his daguerreotypes of a minor official taken in 1853. Uh, there may have been other Eliphalet Brown photographs but only three are known now. Uh, and but there are engravings made from other photographs believed to be by him uh, which <coughs> were printed in the press uh, around that time so 
This is a picture by Felice Beato, an Italian <coughs> photographer who moved, who worked well, in various parts of the Far East, but came to Japan uh, in uh, 1860s. Uh, he, were, he was preceded by several other people, uh, inclu including William Saunders, Charles Parker, and Negretti and Zambra that you've probably heard of, um, who started commercial photography um, in around 1860, in, and they were all based in Yokohama. Uh, y Yokohama was one of the one of the ports, one of the cities that was initially open or permitted to Western visitors. Um, Fe Beato uh, was probably the first of the well-known Western photographers to work in Japan. Uh, his studio was taken over by Baron von. Never get this right, Baron von Stillfried Ratanich, <laughs> an Austrian, I think, who took over his business in 1877. Uh, they made uh, landscapes, genre scenes like this one, uh, portraits, and whatever else came to hand. And from 1873 to 1890, Adolfo Fasari was the uh, was became the leading Western photographer uh, in Japan. Um, there is uh, a page of uh, an album of his work. Uh, I, I'd like to draw your attention to this picture because those of you who have been scanning the table down to my left hand side here uh, have already seen two versions of that picture not just that scene, but from that actual negative, uh, printed by the hero to come, which is uh, Hanbei Misuno. Of course, the Westerners were teaching Japanese photographers, and from about 1862, there were increasing numbers of them operating commercially. Um, this one is by uh, Uchida, uh, from one of his uh, published albums, uh, a, a boat, I'm uh, reading, it's a pleasure boat on the Sumida River. Uh, other names that you may well, you may come across are Shimaoka Renjo, Ueno Hirohikoma, Kusakabe Kimbe, Tamamura Kuzaburo, and Ogawa Kasamusa. Uh, so all of those are names that you might want to look out for and if anybody did open the album that I've got on the centre of the table you will find in there pictures by at least one or two of those that are not all identified. Uh, this is Kusakabe taking a photograph of a, of a western house but built in Japan. Obviously a, a, a western merchant has built himself a house somewhere to live whilst working there. Um, and this picture, of, of course, you, we'll see quite a lot of, of Mount Fuji, Fuji-san. Uh, and this one is taken by Mitsuno himself. Uh, it's, uh, he was a good photographer. And this is Shima Oka. Some of these genre scenes are actually not really particularly attractive. This, this, this one's of a a prisoner who's obviously going to come to a sticky end is being is being uh, inspected by a magistrate and I suspect that he, as I say, he, he didn't do well. Alternatively, it's some people dressed up like that. And quite a lot of these pictures were actually uh, entirely posed uh, little pieces of theatre. Uh, and these, and these pictures were called the Yokohama photograph. I mean, they were a big export item, uh, either as individual prints or, as, or in albums. Uh, and the, the value of exported photographs, you know, sold to tourists, were, was, you know, a couple of million dollars a year, uh, something of that order. So, you know, a fair amount of money was was being made by these by these guys, mostly by the late 
1880s, 1890s, mostly by Japanese photographers themselves. And, and here is the main street in the Bentendori in Yokohama, which is the main shopping drag. Uh, this picture by Tamamura from 1895. Um, Yokohama is not very far from Tokyo, it's, I think it's, it's less than 100 miles um, and Yokohama and Kobe <coughs> were the two main <coughs> ports for international trade and nearly all the photographers were based in or near Yokohama, both Western and uh, Japanese. And, and uh, exoticism uh, uh, the, the attraction of Japan and China and the East, but particularly Japan because it had recently been opened up. Um, I mean, the whole, the whole thing in Western Europe was, was going completely mad. People absolutely loved it. The Mikado by Gilbert and Sullivan, their best known uh, opera, and well, their most successful opera commercially, I think, was entirely inspired by a visit to a Japanese exhibition in London to which uh, uh, W.S. Gilbert went several times uh, so, in, so that he could put together in his head a completely zany and unrealistic plot about uh, Japanese life. Uh, and this that was opened in 1885, so this is all very much the same period. Right, the symbol of this new world in Japan was the building of of in in the 1880s of of this tower, we uh, called Rion Kaku in Asakusa, which contained shops and exhibitions showing the Japanese people what the West had to offer. So it was kind of a, uh, a vertical version of one of the international exhibitions where what the, what the various Western countries had, had to show the Japanese people um, was presented. And this was done not only for the commercial benefit of, of European exporters, but also very much part of the Japanese government's drive to open up people's eyes to what was going on in the rest of the world. Uh, the tower was designed by a guy called William Kinnimond Burton, uh, an Edinburgh Scot who in 1887 had been appointed professor of engineering in the Imperial University of Tokyo. He was basically a water engineer, a civil engineer working on water supplies and drains, sewage, that sort of thing. And he was employed to, to sort out the medieval infrastructure of Tokyo. But, and, and for 12 years he was an unofficial ambassador, if you like, between the, between the two cultures. And he was also very interested in photography and he published photographic books and he sent regular newsletters to uh, photographic uh, journals in the West. Here he is. Um, what little we know directly of the production of these, Jap of these prints comes from uh, Kinnimon's writing, uh, Burton's writing. Uh, he, he wrote extensively to, uh, as I say, to the, to the press in, in the States and in Britain. And uh, so he would have been the first person to see pictures like this. And this, is, this one is the one that's on the front cover of the PW where we first published this. So you, in theory, many of you would have seen this before. So let's now turn to the gold <coughs> and silver prints. Um, which